Chapter 8 is about wireless, mobile computing, and mobile commerce. Each one of these is big business. In the chapter opening case, the focus is on wireless communications. Telecommunications around the world are shifting to Wi-Fi networks. The rule of thumb in the wireless industry is that 75% of the data a smartphone uses per month travels through Wi-Fi. At the writing of your book, AT&T was the only major carrier in the U.S. that offers seamless offloading to Wi-Fi networks. This shows you how competitive the race toward wirelessness can be. Mobile computing is a human-computer interaction in which a computer is expected to be transported during normal usage which allows for transmission of data, voice, and video. Mobile computing involves mobile communication, mobile hardware, and mobile software. The term mobile commerce was originally coined in 1997 by Kevin Duffy at the launch of the Global Mobile Commerce Forum to mean the delivery of electronic commerce capabilities directly into the consumer's hand anywhere via wireless technology. Many choose to think of mobile commerce as meaning a retail outlet in your customer's pocket. So mobile commerce involves transactions using mobile computing technology. Section 8.1 is about wireless technologies. We will talk about two broad categories of wireless technologies, devices and transmission media. Wireless devices communicate without cords using a variety of technologies including infrared light, broadcast radio, cellular radio, microwaves, and communication satellites. Wireless may use analog or digital signals. Wireless technology is used in a variety of modern devices to provide convenience and greater mobility, and wireless devices play an important role in voice and internet connections. In this realm, you may have noticed that modern smartphones are expanding in use and functionality and exhibit a process called dematerialization, which means the functions of many physical devices are included in a single physical device. Table 8.1 provides advantages and disadvantages of wireless media. Most wireless media are limited by line of sight to varying degrees. Other factors are economics and whether communications are synchronous or asynchronous. In other words, whether or not communications happen in both ways at the same time or if they happen at different times. An advantage of a radio transmission system is the signals pass through walls. Your book talks about microwave and satellite. A disadvantage of a microwave transmission system is that it is susceptible to environmental interference. Table 8.2 lists three basic types of telecommunication satellites. LEO satellites move rapidly relative to a point on the Earth. LEO satellites are the cheapest to implement and have the lowest Earth orbit. MEO is medium Earth orbit. These satellites require medium power transmitters. GEO satellites are the most expensive to build and launch. That is because they require much larger satellite orbits. This section has a case. It's about business. Skybox Imaging provides commercial images from Earth's orbit. Skybox is disrupting the space-based commercial imaging industry by focusing on software. Google purchased Skybox in 2014 to keep its maps updated. The biggest challenge for Skybox is government regulation. Section 8.2 is about wireless, computer networks, and internet access. This section organizes wireless computer networks into short, medium, and wide range networks. Your chapter talks about three types of short range wireless networks. Bluetooth is a wireless technology standard used for exchanging data between fixed and mobile devices over short distances using short wavelength radio waves for building personal area networks or PANs. Some of you may be aware of these PANs. Fitbit for example and the gaming system Wii are good examples of PANs that use Bluetooth. Ultra Wideband is a radio technology that can use a very low energy level for short range high bandwidth communications over a large portion of the radio spectrum. Ultra Wideband or UWB has traditional applications in radar imaging, sensor data collection, precision locating and object tracking applications. Whereas traditional wireless signals transmit a continuous signal 
wave or binary forms, ultra-wideband sends intermittent signals. Because it is unique, it is difficult to detect. What we mean by intermittent signals is that ultra-wideband sends one small little wavelet at a time, like shooting bullets, and therefore it is almost impossible to intercept. For this reason, ultra-wideband is used heavily in military applications. Near-field communications is a set of communication protocols for communication between two electronic devices over a distance of 4 centimeters or less. Near-field communications, or NFC, offers a low-speed connection with simple setup that can be used with other more capable wireless connections. NFC devices can act as electronic identity documents and key cards. They are used in contactless payment systems and allow mobile payment replacing or supplementing systems such as credit cards and electronic ticket smart cards. NFC is the technology that enables the most mobile wallet applications. The second large category of wireless communication networks is medium range wireless networks. Your book talks about three different types. First is the wireless local area network or WLAN. This is a wireless LAN that links two or more devices using wireless communication to form a local area network within a limited area such as a home, school, computer laboratory, campus, or office building. This gives users the ability to move around within the area and remain connected to the network. Through a gateway, a WLAN can also provide a connection to the wider internet. The next medium range wireless network is wireless fidelity or Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a family of wireless networking technologies which are commonly used for local area networking of devices and internet access. Wi-Fi is a LAN. The third medium range concept is a hotspot. This is a wireless network access point or area. Hotspots are an example of medium range wireless networks. Wi-Fi Direct enables peer-to-peer -peer communications and allows users to transfer content among devices without having to rely on a wireless antenna. MiFi is a medium range wireless network. Super Wi-Fi is a term originally coined by the United States Federal Communications Commission to describe a wireless networking protocol which the FCC plans to use for the creation of longer distance wireless internet access. The use of the trademark Wi-Fi in the name has been criticized because it is not based on Wi-Fi technology or endorsed by the Wi-Fi Alliance. The third major category of wireless computer networks is the Wide Area Wireless Network. There are two major types. First is cellular radio. Cellular radio describes a method of increasing the number of simultaneous radio conversations that can be supported by a fixed number of radio frequency channels by limiting the range of transmitters to a single cell to which a proportion of the available channels is allocated. Adjacent cells are allocated to a different set of RF channels to avoid interference and conversation blocking. Frequencies can be reused in cells at intervals sufficient to avoid interference. Finally, we have wireless broadband or WiMAX. This is a standards-based technology enabling the delivery of last-mile wireless broadband access as an alternative to cable and DSL. In this section, there is a case. It's about business. A Wi-Fi network provides communications at the 2014 Winter Olympic Games. The International Olympic Committee selected Avea to build and manage the Wi-Fi network for the Games. The Sochi Winter Games were similar to the Vancouver Winter Games because they both utilized the services of Avea to get their cities ready for the Games. Imagine how difficult it would be to provide Wi-Fi networking over such a large geographical area containing several campuses. Section 8.3 is about mobile computing and mobile commerce. The evolution of mobile computing has spawned innovations in mobile commerce. Mobility means that users carry a device with them and can initiate a real-time contact with other systems from wherever they happen to be. Mobile computing refers to the real-time connection between a mobile device and other computing environments. Mobility means accessibility. For example, ubiquity means a mobile device can provide information and communication regardless of the user's location. Broad reach refers to the fact that when users carry an open mobile device, they can be reached instantly, even across great distances. Your book describes several important mobile commerce applications. First is location-based applications and services. Location-based applications are targeted to individuals in specific locations. Foursquare 
Pokemon Go, Gas Buddy, and Uber are all examples of location-based services. Another important mobile commerce application area is financial services. Mobile financial services include mobile banking, mobile payments, and mobile transactions. These represent a growing and promising class of mobile services for consumers. Processes supported by mobile financial services include authentication, authorization, banking and payment alerts, and limiting the liability for unauthorized transactions. Another class of mobile computing is intra-business applications. This consists of m-commerce applications that are used within organizations. Companies can use non-voice mobile services to assist in dispatch functions, that is to assign jobs to mobile employees along with detailed information about the job. Another area is in accessing information. When it comes to accessing information, mobile portals and voice portals are designed to aggregate and deliver content in a form that will work within the limited space available on mobile devices. These portals provide information anywhere and anytime to users. Finally, telemetry applications. Telemetry is the wireless transmission and receipt of data gathered from remote sensors. The key fob you use to open your car before you get to it is an example of telemetry. Your chapter contains another case. It's about business, Apple's iBeacon. Apple's iBeacon uses short-range wireless network technology to provide location-aware contextual information to users. The drawback of traditional QR codes for location-based tracking is that they require users to open a specific app to take a clear photo. Retailers that use location-based services like iBeacon favor an opt-in informed consent option to avoid alienating customers. Another informative case in this section is It's About Business Telemedicine at the Miami Children's Hospital. The hospital utilizes various models for serving different types of patients. The mobile model at Miami Children's Hospital is most appropriate for non-emergency consultative services because the physician is limited to a visual examination. The semi-static model utilizes rented carts where patients receive a live consultation with Miami Children's Hospital specialists working out of the command center. The extremely static model utilizes kiosks to open new market opportunities in off-site locations like malls and shopping centers. Section 8.4 covers the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is a system of interrelated computing devices, mechanical and digital machines provided with unique identifiers and the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring human-to-human -human or human-to-computer interaction. The Internet of Things is also called the Industrial Everywhere Internet. The evolution of Internet protocols has been an important factor in the development of the Internet of Things. Perhaps the first step toward connecting everything to the Internet is Radio Frequency Identification, or RFID. RFID uses electromagnetic fields to automatically identify and track tags attached to objects. An RFID tag consists of a tiny radio transponder, a radio receiver, and transmitter. When triggered by an electromagnetic interrogation pulse from a nearby RFID reader device, the tag transmits digital data, usually an identifying inventory number, back to the reader. This number can be used to inventory goods. The advantage of RFID tags is that they can be read over great distances. Your book also provides examples of Internet of Things in use. Wireless sensors are an underlying technology of the Internet of Things. So with this in mind, think about how things in your home can be connected. So with this in mind, think about how things in your home can be connected to the Internet. This includes modern devices such as voice controllers, for example, Amazon Echo Plus, and doorbell cams, and smart locks, and mobile robots. Also, traditional objects in the home such as light switches, air quality controllers, smoke alarms, thermostats, and lighting systems. This section has a case. It's about business Marks & Spencer embraces RFID. Marks & Spencer is a major British multinational retailer with headquarters in London, England that specializes in selling clothing, home products, and food products. In the case, Marks & Spencer implemented RFID to track its inventory more effectively. Metals and thick liquids can interfere with RFID signals, so Marks & Spencer uses more powerful ID tags to ensure 100% of its merchandise is tagged. 
Section 8.5 provides various concepts related to wireless security. RF jamming is when a person or a device intentionally or unintentionally interferes with your wireless network transmissions. War driving is the act of locating wireless local area networks, or WLANs, while driving around a city. A rogue access point is a wireless access point that has been installed on a secure network without explicit authorization from a local network administrator, whether added by a well-meaning employee or a malicious attacker. An evil twin attack is a type of rogue access point. A hotspotter allows you to access internet at hotspots such as airports, hotels, restaurants, gyms, and more. A hotspotter can be used for malicious purposes when hackers use it for creating a rogue access point. The chapter closing case is about Facebook, which is one of four firms in world history that have surpassed the $1 trillion mark in market capitalization. Coincidentally, the other three firms are also IT firms. Like many IT firms, Facebook has struggled to find out exactly what creates value for their firm. One of the reasons Facebook shares dropped by 50% from the IPO was their neglect of mobile advertising. Facebook has busted the myth that small screens inhibit big, fishy ads. Facebook has discovered native ads are the most effective way of reaching customers. And this concludes Chapter 8. Thank you.